Hello everyone, it's LJ, your favourite individual, or not, yeah, I, I don't make the judge of that, you can make the judge of that, and as you can read by the title, I'm talking about All Engines Go again for technically the last time, and I'm pretty sure I'm wondering, LJ, why is it like this, because you put effort, so much effort into the only one. Well, let's just say I'm not going to bother wasting my time with it and so on and so forth. But before I go in a bit more into talking about all engines go for the last time, I just want to say a quick update. In the what's to come video, I'm, I sounded a bit like a bit harsh by being like, oh, I've done this with BBA, blah, blah, blah. And it came off like I was saying, the series is over. So I'm just going to say this now, the series is not over. It'll come out when it's ready. And, oh sorry, I'm burping. <laughs> now, the rest of Season 7, and whether I've mentioned for the What's To Come review, the What's To Come video will come out when it's ready. So like obviously the JJ, Oishi, Material Girl, Julie Jekyll and all, that will come out. The Tugs one has been cancelled due to um, kind of not knowing what I want to talk about now because right, I could talk about the Star Trek shows, I could talk about all the new stuff we have. I can, you know what I mean, because I don't know what else I could bring new to the table and obviously you've got the iceberg to mess around with so... That's that. I do recommend watching the Tugs Iceberg. It's it's a good, and it shows how much of a piece of shit corporation the Star Trek Trust exhibition is. And for someone, and for a place that is a exhibition, they really love to hide a shit ton of stuff to themselves. And and you know they're they're fucking cowards when. They pit when they were like, oh shit, next time are coming, what, what do we do, what do we do? And thinking that he's going there just to start fight, like, my god. And he fucking told me this the moment he came back from the event in a Discord call, but, you know. And also, I think a few days after, he told me how, and tell me that how much of a piece of shit human being Sam Wilkinson is. And he, he's not wrong, so there's that. So yeah, bottom line, the rest of BBA will come out when it's ready, along with the review, so those will be out when they're ready. So there's that, so. Yeah, so All Engines Go has dropped out of the blue. It made its way into Mexico. It's being pulled off from Mexico immediately because a lot of people don't like it. It somehow caught the attention of a shit ton of news. <clears throat> it's also caught the attention of a shit ton of news articles, which kind of caught me off guard. And a load of Facebook mums have been like, "My kids don't like this. They they refuse to watch it." So that that's kind of awful. And yeah, so I've only sat through three episodes. I've sat through the first episode like three times now because one of my own, one in with a group of friends who've done obviously the 20 minute YTP stuff and the Sean and the Fred YTP collab, like I recommend giving them a watch. They're, they're really fucking funny. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Talk about good stuff. Yeah, so... And I think, obviously, third time, just to show one of my friends, be like, oh, look, look at this, look at this. Diesel is switching points with his hands, but, yeah. So then, after saying through three episodes, what do I think of All Engines Go? I, I really don't like it. It's, it's dreadful. It's really fucking dreadful. And... And even though the way I'm talking now for like five minutes 
you, you're going to be like, why? You're not going all, I'm so angry, I'm done, I'm fucking done. Urgh. Kind of. It's pretty much, I'm pretty much fed up. Because we knew this was going to happen. And they've already ordered like 50 episodes for two seasons. In a similar way to the Bob the Builder reboot. And, yeah, so, even though they ordered that as, like, a backup, and who knows if they'll commission more, it, it depends on what they're going to do, because they commissioned an extra season for the Bob the Builder reboot, but after that they left it to die. So, all engines ago will be left to die, unless um, a load of people start fucking praising it like it's the second coming of Christ. Oh my god, because... All Engines Go makes Misty Island Rescue, the model era, the Sharon Miller era, the, the model era, and the CGI era when she was still writing stuff. They make them more fucking watchable. Because in those eras, at least Thomas isn't like using his fucking hand, isn't like doing jumps, 360 jumps. And using his wheel hands to, to, to switch points and whatnot. Now, that's another thing. They... And I'm pretty sure you've seen it in the first video I talked about, where they get, like, an interview with SIF, and they're like, oh, we're not going to use something something as hands. Yeah, it contradicts it. Yeah, that's heavily contradicting, because we see them use their front wheels as hands a shit ton of times. Like, change points... I think I've seen one picture floating around where Thomas picks up a map with his wheel hands, and I'm just like, no. What the hell, Mattel? Actually, that, that'll make a great t shirt, What the hell, Mattel? But, like, I'm pretty much fucking done. And what do I think of the other stuff? The voice acting. Like, I would say the voice acting is actually decent. The the child actors for Thomas, Percy, Nia, Diesel, Kana, Carly, and Sandy. Like, I would say they're very decent. Decent child voice actors. And so far, by the time it's recording, no one hasn't gone out of their way to, like, harass the child actors. So, uh, that's kind of a thank God for that. Like, even when... We got like the trailer leak. I was heavily more concerned over the fact that a load of people were gonna fucking bully these child actors. Which, like, you don't do that. Basically, you, you don't do that. You don't, <laughs> you don't bully child actors for doing their fucking job. And I would say they would get like a good career if they obviously. What do you call it? The uh, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to this, but the child actors they they did a good job and at what they're given, and even when we found out who's voicing who, they still get a pass from me. Uh, especially the the voice actor that plays Thomas, realizing that she's the the son of the voice actor for the original Lara Croft, which that's 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 a surprising interest. That's a bit of a oh, that's fucking neat. That's pretty neat. Thomas the Tank Engine and and his female driver with voluptuous tees. <laughs> oh, I'm not funny. Now, I think obviously the other voice actor that caught people's attention was. Neil, yeah. Neil Crone, the, the voice of Gorn in the... From Magic Railroad to where we are now. And the fact that the voice... Both voices sound identical. But his All Engines Go counterpart sounds a bit older. So, it, it surprises me, though. And I'll say, it was kind of surreal hearing... Neil Crone's Gordon saying names of characters you wouldn't expect him to say, like Nia, Diesel, Carly, 
or whoever, like. And what do I think of the characters they brought back? We've technically got, like, technically engines 1 to 6 in Emily in terms of the Steam team and Nier. But Toby and Rebecca have disappeared. Which is kind of funny, seeing that the idea for Nia and Rebecca was just swap out Edward and Henry's, but originally Edward, but... Oh, you can't win them all. And I think, what else? I think out of all the characters in terms of who they've thrown in, I'd say it's surprising with to me is Diesel and Nia, because with, with Diesel, it's now hard to believe that this is the same character that Wilbur written and then ran out fucking quickly the moment he showed up. And then, same thing with how he was introduced in TV series until Bro across us, until Brit was like, hey, how about we bring this character back? And I think that might have, I don't know, affected the character in a way, so it, it's kind of hard to believe. And I'll say, even with Nia as well, like, as much as a load of people don't like Nia, I'll say this though, her All Engines Go counterpart makes her original look downright fucking pointless. Because, like, even though people don't like Nia and Rebecca, I think Nia's written more better, despite the fact that Rebecca was planned first since day one, and they've done nothing with Rebecca, but with Nia, they have an idea where it's this character from Africa, she follows Thomas around the world, she says her old shed is destroyed or whatever, and then roughly here and there she'll be like, oh we never have this in Africa, we never have this in Africa, we never have this in Africa, and then once every full moon when they feel like it, like, hmm, how about we make a deal with cultural shock? which was a total of once. And then at the end of the Big World Big Adventures area, they're like, oh shit, we got this character that we've heavily marketed and fleshed out, but not the proper use of it. Let's make her work at the railway zoo and make her work there. And I will say that's kind of subtly racist, but at the same time, do you see what I mean? Like, and also with all the campaign stuff backing her up in the day. What the, why am I going to make it sound like she was already... Oh, back in my day, Nia was the citizen cane of diversity. But I'll just say, it's just the way they handled it very poorly. And also, and also the other thing is pushing that, oh, she's actually voiced by a voice actress from the said region. And nothing against the uh, Nia's voice actress in both versions. But Mattel's kind of defeated the purpose of Nia. The character that they've heavily promoted in all their stuff is just useless now. They've kind of drained away what technically they kicked off to say, yeah, we, we got more female characters, what are you talking about? Even though you had like a giant library before. Now, what do I think of all the other characters? In terms of the returning characters, like I said, we got engines 1 to 6, Emily and Nia, Steam Team wise. Diesel, well, you can't have anything with Diesel. We got Cranky returning, which is surprise. And then we have Harold there. His face is not molded to his body. You got Annie and Clarabel, troublesome truck. Um, we got fat, the fat controller, fatty bum bum. Joe Ho, I'm a fat man. And then who else? Um, yeah, I think someone said Bolstrode came back, and I'm just like, you took your fucking time to do something with a character. They keep p pushing in all the fucking merchandise. Yeah, you've got. What do you want to call it? Captain sitting in the corner doing diddly squat, like doing nothing. Like, what, what are you trying to pull, Mattel? 
And then, obviously, you've got, like, Carly, which is, like, a heavy thing. And the fact that forcing, pushing Nia to be, like, not Nia, what? What are you talking about? Like, pushing Carly as, like, a main character when <laughs> she was start off as just a a random secondary character you'll forget that exists even though they permanently put her in a location that'll make you say she's here now she's never going anywhere fuck you and now i think whoever's in charge of the reboot probably looked her and said off with her head and then chopped her head off and stuck her on some wheels so with the bit i'm tripping words so what is Carly based off in terms of the big or big adventures wise? Is it is it freelance design now? Is it a? Because I'm pretty sure someone will obviously find it like a something based off of it. I don't know. And in terms of the new characters, there's obviously some new ones in Soto Race thing, which I'm pretty sure is supposed to kickstart the reboot. Even though all the other stuff came first. And then you got like Khan and Sandy. Out of the two of them, I I would say Sandy's more interesting because because how downright it's a fucking cute little character. Like I I would kill for a plush toy. And then as for Kana, I really really do not like Kana. Mostly because I'll see people point out like I forgot to bring this up in in the follow up video actually. The second one, the let's talk about the Thomas Twenty One reboot trailer trailer analysis one. A load of people noticed that Kana looks like a Thomas OC by someone that looks spot on identical, close to color design, and obviously close similar name. I forgot the name of the artist and I forgot the OC name, but someone has pointed out that. Kind of looks like really identical to someone's OC, and I think the original artist got really fucking pissed over it. And I'll say so, I I can't blame them. Like you've lit you're being theft from what whatever the hell they're doing. The greedy corporates, the greedy, greedy, greedy corporates. So yeah, I think, and also the more you look at. And also with um, with Kana, it's just oh, streamlined choo choo. I'm just like you've literally defeated the purpose of technically Gordon and Rebecca roaming around Soto, but even though Rebecca's not there. Now, as for Sandy, and also with Carly's new purpose, because she's no longer a crane at the dock, someone looked at her and said, "Off with her head." The fact that yeah, Carly's now like a maintenance crane, and Sandy's like, oh, oh, look at this, look at this. And the way the dynamic is played, you could easily replace them with already existing characters like Harvey and Philip. But no one would tell they'll be like, oh no, we need to do this because uh, the, the the people complain that we don't have enough female characters, even though you've got like an entire fucking library. And just to go a bit of a tangent with Sandy one more time, you know, the problem I have with hers. They def they now defeated the purpose of Rosie. Because when Rosie appeared for the first time, she was obviously pink, but they changed it to red. And SIF was like praising me, like, oh, Rosie's going to do so much. And the only thing she did was appear in the background of season 21, sabotage the entire series. In the only episode she showed up in where James wrecks the sheds. And then in the Big or Big Adventures era came part of some cringy Deviant Art ship story. And also with the redesign they're like, oh we did it so boy we can all the male audience, our little boy audience will be more interested in her. Yeah, you've got Caitlin and Ashima roaming around. And I got fucking Sandy in the reboot, because all three of them are fucking pink, so by that logic, Ashima should be a different colour scheme then. Like you've literally defeated Rosie's purpose, like, as a whole now, with you with Sandy's evidence. You know what else? 
what other characters am I missing? Um, oh yeah, they brought Hiro and Kenji back. Now this is one fear I do have with the race thing, and obviously Hiro and Kenji. I have a, I have a hunch that the Sodor race thing could possibly be a leftover from the Big or Big Adventures arc era, I mean. Because, like, Hiro and Kenji are written off, and they go back to Japan. And then Tom's like, oh, well, I could come and see you guys in Japan, and like, oh, we'll see you whenever, Thomas. That's a bit racist, so I do apologise. And then, in the special, we see Kenji and Hiro roaming around, and with these new engines from Japan, so that could be a leftover from Big Old Big Adventures for all we know. And then, who else? Oh, yeah, they brought back Whiff of all characters, even though they've not touched Whiff in God knows how long. And they only mentioned him by name in the first episode. His location is f fucking present. And according to my friend Fairport Fred, who's going out of his way to sit for the whole thing. Sad man. They do mention Whiff a shit ton of times more again. Then I think earlier this week, in the weekend, on Saturday, Jerome told me that Whiff was planned to appear, but they ran out of time to make him. And and this was in a group call, and I went off on a tangent run, and what I said was, like, I don't know what the difference is with CG animation and the 2D animation they do all engines go, but it would take less time to, like, Fucking come up with a whiff for all and just go. All you have to do is just draw a fucking train. Whilst with the CGI stuff, you have to like blender everything. And so I don't know what's the fucking excuse if you know where I'm coming from. Like, especially with how they cut corners, because I think a load of people realise that Henry's model in all engines go. It's just a reskin of Gorn's. Because obviously they have like a 2D animation rig because it's all done in Flash. Mm. And and the other thing I brought up was what's also stopping them from bringing Paxton and Sydney back seeing that they're just straight up recolors of Diesel. Like, you can't fucking win, can you? Like, I don't know. I, I don't know what these money laundering scheme people are doing. And what else? What else? <laughs> Like, this is all going to be raw audio, I'm not going to bother editing it all together. But the... It's just... As a whole, even from the three episodes of Sat Room for the original review I was going to do, after sitting for the third review... Third review? Well, third episode, I just fucked off to the shower. And then headed off to work, because, we'll see, I now have a job. Nine till five, so... That's why a load of videos are taking much more longer, if that makes sense. Especially with like the month, yeah, the months, month gap, unless it's like a shitty filler video or just a filler video in general, which I'm just randomly now doing, because why not? Why the hell not? So, and the other stuff that kind of annoys me is like they say, oh, this and that in their. Tend to like the pitch packet to SIF saying, oh, we're not going to do this, but we're going to do this. Yeah, it's contradicting. They say, oh, the factuals still have a British accent, but he's got like an American accent. From what I've heard, I don't know, I'm not saying through the, the fucking reboot to find out. The clips on Twitter will do the talking for me. And then the... Oh, what was it, the... And then saying they won't use the trains as hands. <laughs> yeah, they're seen even in the first episode, Thomas and Diesel are like racing, and they flip the points with their wheels as hands. And I think even somewhere in the story, in there, Percy uses his fucking buffer to pick up something. And I'm just like, no, stop that. And, and that's the entire thing. I'm just like, fucking stop. It just physically hurts. But 
yeah, at this point, all engines go is just say big old. It's just a waste of time, and I'm just saying this now, probably repeat it earlier. I probably wasted my time doing the two videos on All Engines Go. Because ignoring all the other videos I've done over the years, and only count the videos I've done in 2021, those two are the only most popular videos of this year. And that's, and that's sad. When I put more fun and effort into my Underground Ernie review, which I do people recommend watching that video and obviously the series as a whole because he's fucking better than Chuggington. Oh uh, god, so yeah, bottom line, what do I thought of the episodes from All Ends Curly? The plots are fine, it's just I have a problem with what the hell is going on. And after I'll see the third episode where Thomas and Percy are spies messing around with all this gimmicky stuff, I'm just I'm just sitting here, wondering to myself, am I supposed to believe that these are the same characters, the same bloody characters, that appeared in a set of books in like the 40s or 50s, whenever they popped up in the railway series? Am I supposed to believe these are the same characters that appeared in a set of books from that era, who would later upon appear in a show in the fucking A's. Like, am I supposed to believe these are the same characters? Actually, that's another thing. Um, the one thing we... The one thing I want to say is a interesting... Oh, God, you're right, kind of anger. I like how, in the currently to this day, they're like, Thomas and Percy are friends. When even the moment Thomas first met Percy in both TV and book, they never acknowledged that friendship, like, at all, at the beginning. Unless there's something I'm missing, I don't know. So, at this point, it's pretty much a, I'm done, I'm fucking done, there's... The, the animation's fine, it's just... It feels like I'm looking at My Little Pony Boat trains and... Yeah, God. I don't even know what else to say, because... It's a stick of fork in me, I'm done, like, even... The consistency on how the engines are sitting on the rails. Because there are moments in the series. Because there are clips I've seen where they don't rely on the rails to move around. And I'm just like, you've defeat you defeat the purpose of them being fucking trains. Like, idiot. Stupid individuals. What the hell? I, I don't know. I, I give up. So yeah, that's what I think of All Engines Go. It's terrible, a waste of time. It kind of makes the Big Ol' Big Avengers era and the Sharon Miller era fucking watchable. So all those errors need an apology. Especially Sharon Miller, like, she needs a fucking apology. Because when she was writing stuff, at least she never wrote stories where Thomas and Percy are secret agents or... Thomas and Percy are secret agents, or whatever the hell. Or Thomas and his friends, like, pretend to be knights at the round table, like fucking King Arthur. Like, they never- she never did any of that stuff. And it's more sad now as well, because obviously in recent times we found out that, oh, she was trying to write Billy and Dennis to appear more, but obviously got changed last minute, because hit entertainment being buttholes. Which is what, and obviously, well, whatever was left of them was recycled into Norman and Charlie, and then you got realizing that she almost tried to bring Derek back, but got mistook him for Paxton in the script thing because of the naming. So you just there uh, wonder yourself, you can't win them all. You you really can't win them all, especially when I found out from Jerome that. That she, with the Shake Shake Bridge in Misty Island, it was supposed to be a more sturdier bridge. But he was like, no, do this to the bridge. And yeah, you realize that Sharon Miller's writing was a living hell than all the people that suck up to Miss Oran Blossom, Train Level 476 in the day, saying that, 
ooh, your writing is awful, I hope you die. And it, it's all funny game, because I remember someone on Twitter put her fucking face on a dartboard. And I'm just like, calm the fuck down. She only written, like, one or two bad stories, and you're acting like she fucking assassinated your family. Like, you're acting like this woman fucking sabotaged your house or some shit. She's a fucking human being, like, even with all the, I'm gonna be honest, not all the episodes in the Brenner era are good or evil, or even the later Brenner, or even the Big or Big Adventures era, but you don't see anyone in that era fucking lashing out of the rise, be like, your you writing is bad, like, what the hell, it's like you can't fucking win them. So in all fairness, like, whatever the hell Sharon Miller wrote is more fucking tame than whatever the hell All Engines Go pulled out of its ass. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm just looking at the recording runtime, it's just 31 minutes, so I can't wait for YouTube to spam this in people's recommendations to be like, and, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm just, it's just a rambling, I'm not gonna edit anything out, so... Yeah, so, big all, all engines go, I'm done, I'm fucking done, said the famous Vosha Studios. So I'm not going to watch more of it, I'm not even going to pretend it exists, even though I've now seen people fucking praising fucking all engines go like it's the fucking holy grail, like... Why? You're all hypocrites. You're treating it like it's the Holy Grail, yet you shit on all the other stuff, like... You can't fucking win. Especially before we all saw the other stuff, you're like, this is gonna be worse, and now you're all praising, like, why? Why would you do that, uh, the humanity? Oh, uh, God. Yeah, so bottom line, it's not good. Big or big, big or big, what? All engines go is not good, it's not worth your time, so. All the other stuff I mentioned, the other reviews I'm doing on, like JJ, Julie Jekyll, Material Girl, Luigi, all that, all that is coming along with season 7 of BBA. I'm obviously going to work a bit more on that now. Whilst the reviews are on the side, because I'm still writing them. If that makes sense, so. Yeah, thank you all for watching this now 33 minute video. Oh god. Thank you all for watching and goodbye. Da, 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 da. You, you know the job. Adios.